How can data change the world? That's a question that Gavin Starks, the CEO of Open Data Institute, or ODI, asks himself pretty much every day. I guess that's about right, isn't it, Gavin? Uh, welcome right. to Reuters on the Road. You get a loop of Canary Wharf to, to tell me about this idea. Um, how do you, in one sentence, describe ODI to people? So we're looking to catalyze the development of open data culture, and that means unlocking data supply, so working with uh, public sector and private sector organizations to help them create sustainable, meaningful data supply, but also unlocking demand, so working mm -hmm. with them to unlock uh, ideas and turn those innovations into startup businesses. All right, so uh, you, you know, from a layman's perspective, you're going to have to explain this a little, mo yeah. little more to me. Give me an example of how data has been used to change the world for so, the better. Great, so what, one uh, very straightforward example is GPS itself. The fact that every single location-based service has access to uh, the satellite information is an example of open data in action. Looking at emerging examples, you could look at the My Data initiative that's mm -hmm. being uh, run by the, through the Cabinet Office, um, where they're looking at unlocking your information. So for example, your energy bills, one of the biggest challenges at the moment for households across the country are their energy bills. Yep. If we can supply that information back from the service providers and utilities, then we can help people understand how to reduce Supply and make sense of it, right? And make sense of it. And right. not just to get the utilities to compete on price, but to help people reduce their energy consumption as well so they can actually save money. Okay, uh, you've recently called for, for postcode data, that's zip code data for yeah. our US viewers to be opened up and used. How, what, what do you see as the benefits from that? Pretty much every location-based service needs access to good location-based information. And the fact that we haven't got there yet in terms of that as a, a, an open data set in the UK is inhibiting uh, innovation and development in that area. You can compare with uh, Denmark, where they opened up the postcode uh, files mm -hmm. and they got a 4x return on their investment. So instead of government investing in it and getting... So a, the know, government got a 4x return. So they, yes. Okay. You know, so they, okay. they managed to increase their uh, return from the revenues they mm -hmm. were getting mm -hmm. and increase a num the number of users and number of businesses accessing it. So All right. there's a difference in business. Model. All right, we're about halfway around. Um, you've mentioned government twice. You mentioned yeah. the cabinet office, you mentioned government just yeah. now. Uh, I'm interested because I want to know what role government plays in this because yeah. cause you are a collaboration between business, academia and government. We sit right at that pivot point and we're incredibly fortunate in that our founders, Tim Berners-Lee and, and Professor Nigel Shambo managed to create a non-profit, non-government organisation, so we're limited by guarantee, but managed to secure funding through Technology Strategy mm -hmm. Board for mm -hmm. £10 million. Sorry, sorry let me, years. Tim Berners-Lee is the founder of the company? Tim Berners-Lee and Nigel Shadbolt have been and working Tim, on this for I years. just want to explain yeah. this, Tim Berners-Lee of course is the, the, uh, the guy who credited with, with uh, creating the World Wide Web. Did it, did it stress you that, uh, that our American friends had no idea who he was when he was at the opening of the Olympics? It didn't surprise me in the slightest. Uh, I think you know, typically British and modest, I think in our um, outward promotion of our inventions. Um, just talk to me a little bit more about how what you do stimulates innovation and enterprise, and then I want to come on to, to, to London as a hub of this. Okay. Well, let, let me give you one example. So we have um, a complete transformation going in the IT industry where you're getting transform, um, hosting moving to the cloud, all services moving to the cloud. That has a huge impact if you're looking to deploy code and meet your carbon reduction targets. Now, this might not seem like a, a natural link, but when you're looking to deploy and run uh, code mm -hmm. in a, and mm -hmm. you want a clean cloud, that uh, the carbon intensity of that cloud is dependent on the national energy infrastructure of the country you're running it in. So actually there's a good argument to say we should be shifting some of the cloud hosting from coal-based fire stations in Texas to clean power yeah. in yeah. Northern, Northeast Europe. We, we've, by the way, we've hit about every red light on the way around. I think it's the first time we've done it. Um, I, I guess that's good luck to you because you've got more time to, to talk about this. Um, London as a as a hub for this sort of thing is is I mean we you know some days I read it's it's a great centre for this other days I read actually you know it's sort of number seven number eight on the list worldwide what do you think I tend not to get too stressed about it I've been running startup companies around the Shoreditch area for the nearly fifteen years okay. now There's, it's always been a centre of innovation there's a great um, vibrant creative community as well as technical community in that area the fact that the government's noticed is also great just to finish up I can see uh, the Reuters uh, uh, office coming up um, you're a non-for-profit um, right. but what what's what sort of revenue do you look at uh, on a, on a, on an annual basis okay from so uh, we're seven weeks old so we're currently building out capabilities right now 
we're going to be building a huge uh, training capability because every all the stakeholders in this need uh, to get involved in training from policymakers to lawyers yep. to technical people so we will ha have a, a revenue stream there from our training capabilities okay well gavin thank you very much i think we're at a red light yeah in fact it's a, another another red light gavin stark ceo open ceo of open data institute thank you very much for being in the cab with us today that was Reuters on the Road. I'm Axel Kroll.